In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can make those background patterns that you see a lot of times in intros, and you can see them in my intros as well recently. But as an added bonus, I'm going to also show you how you can make it react to music, and it's actually a pretty genius way if I do say so myself. So, yeah, let's get started. So, I already created a composition, I'll call it BG1. So what we're going to do is we're going to select a shape from here in the shape tool. So I'm going to select a star, well, a polygon actually, I'm going to select a polygon and I'll make this a light color like that. Alright, so I'm going to draw it right there. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, don't use the fill, the stroke, like the stroke over here. And uh, I think this is enough. So let's hold shift and drag out. So I think this is enough. So I'm gonna go here, down here to polystar and I'm gonna change the points to three. So it will be a triangle this is the shape that I'm gonna use. So let me center the anchor point and let me center it in the composition. By the way, if you don't have the center anchor point script that I'm using, just go to this tool, the pan behind tool, and then just drag it around approximately to the center. Or you can hold control and do it as well. So now what you want to do is click on that, right click, or click on this one, and go to repeater. And here's a trick that I want to show you. So instead of it expanding only to the right, or to the left, we want it to expand evenly onto both sides or horizontally. So instead of like messing around with some number, what you, what you want to do is change the offset to negative half of the copies. So we're gonna add an expression so that we don't have to worry about like changing both of them at the same time. So Alt click on the offset keyframe. And what we're gonna do is, with this selected, we're gonna hold on to this and drag on to copies. And then we're gonna do slash negative two. So we'll make it exactly, so we'll make this value negative half of this value. So if we try to change it, it'll always go back to this because it's linked to this. So if we change this to let's say 20, it'll always be negative 10. So it's pretty convenient. Now, I'll just change this to like 30, 30 for now. So, if you go into the transform options, I'll make this 200 position so that there's a good amount of spacing between them. And yeah, that's it for this one. What we're gonna do is click on contents and we're gonna click on repeater again. So we're repeating the repeater. That's it's pretty fun to do. So we're gonna all click on the offset and we're just going to rewrite the same expression that we did earlier so because, so that it's easier. But now if we go into the transform it's repeating it uh, horizontally, we're gonna repeat it vertically. So we change the X to zero and the Y to maybe 200 or we can uh, mess around with the value. So I'll just crank this up to like what, maybe 10. So I'll just keep this at 10. And I'll just crank up the value like this much, maybe. Yeah, I'll do, yeah, this much is enough for me. So what I'm gonna do is now twirl down here and I'm going to go to the position and I'm gonna go all the way to the left of this. So I'll just go to all the way to the left. Okay, it's good enough. And now I'm gonna animate the position from zero to 10 or however long you want it. So I'm gonna animate to go from here to maybe the middle or if you want to be really daring and go fast, you can move it to the end like so. So let me preview this. So let's preview that.
Okay, this is pretty good. I'll just change res. I'll change my uh, previews just to make it faster. There we go. So it's uh, pretty good. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to add a null object. So if we go to layer new null object, and what we're gonna do is in there in the parent one, we're just going to take this and drag it to the null. So now what do we do on the null? It's affected. It's affecting the uh, the uh, uh, the shape layer that we're doing. So this is the best part. So what you want to do is grab some music. Um, so find some good music here. Um, um, so grab this song, uh, Leo Groove. This is pretty good song, and just. Find the spot that you want to use. Fine, so let's preview the music. Alright, that's good enough for now. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find wherever the beat hits through by holding control and dragging on the timeline. So let's animate the position. So we're just gonna do that. And let's just add a little bit of easing like that. So if we preview it, let's just do a little bit like there. There, so now what we'll do is just move it like a couple frames back and then move a couple frames forward. And then we will move it like that forward. So, so it's like a keyframe there. And generally, what I do is I move, I set it where the beat is supposed to be, and I move it 10 frames back, and then I move 10 frames forward, and then I move it. So it's pretty consistent way of getting what you want so i'll do i'll make this go back 10 frames and then i'll move forward 10 uh 10 frames and i do that so then i go find the next beat Alright guys, so what I'm going to do now is I'm done with doing this, so now I'm going to grab all these keyframes, do a little bit of easing on it, and I'll just go to 4 seconds and I'll, and I'll just stop it right there. So let's watch it. Uh, just, again, it's not my best, so just if it goes out of sync. Uh, since this is like uh, my frame rate is low right now, I'm going. At, I'm skipping every frame. It's gonna be probably look like potato to you, but uh, but I can assure you when I'm looking at it, it's pretty good. So now one of the things that I do in the intro is that uh, once what happens is that it not only goes one direction, it also goes the other direction as well, and it's in the, like, uh, here, let me show you an example. So, over here, in this empty space, it's going the other way, it's going this way. So, uh, there's a pretty easy way to do this, it's just, let's drag this one into a new composition, it's gonna be BG2, and it's pretty simple. All you have to do is duplicate the layer, command control or command D. And let's just move this down a little bit. And just if you want to, we'll just do that just in case. 
So, looks like both of them are moving in the same direction. All you have to do is go to transform and flip horizontal. So now, if we see it, oh, oh, whoops, <laughs> let me, let me just uh, remove that because it's double thing and then paste that there. Okay, good. Let's preview this. Again, this is not my best work, but if you do this carefully, this method will be pretty effective in what you're doing. So, yeah. Uh, just one last thing um, before I end this video. Uh, there's an effect that I add of uh, Venetian blinds. I just use an adjustment layer and I just add Venetian blinds to it. And let's just increase that a little bit. And I increase the width and maybe even rotate it a little bit like that or maybe 90 degrees so it's like that or 45 so it's diagonal and what you also might want to consider doing is reducing the opacity on this because it might draw too much tension if it's just like that so just also just to add a a cool little effect you can reduce the opacity on the adjustment layer so it can give like this cool striped kind of thing but instead of having the background show in those stripes it will actually have a color show it's pretty cool so yeah that's 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 pretty much the effect. It's pretty simple to do if you do correct if you do it properly, and it and it's pretty pretty cool to see how this is used in like many places, like intros and stuff. And yeah, that's that's all I have to say for uh, for today's video. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, sorry for the lack of uploads lately, but. I'm trying to get back on track uh, from now on, so yeah. See you guys later.